Uh, welcome all. I am Arthi Fadke from KJ Sumaya College of Engineer. This is a practice peer assignment video on learning dialogue and reflection spot in a course on how to teach programming basics. Uh, the problem is like this. I have a, a stack of corrected AT assignments which are alphabetically sorted and a student named Pankaj comes to me because he wants to see his assignment. Now how do I find the assignment from the stack? Normally, I will check each and every assignment, check its number, check the name on the assignment and I will go on doing it till I find Pankaj's assignment. Now, if the same thing is treated as a search problem, the problem is stated like this. In a sorted array, I want to find an element. So, let's say the array is of 12 elements. The positions of the elements are shown and the values stored in the array are also shown in this. I want to search the position of element 37. It may be very very simple and visible. Wait a minute. Uh, the array is normally not known to you. It is just known that A is an array of 12 elements and you are supposed to search the position of element 37. And then how do you go about it? What will you do? You will start from the first element. You will check its value. Compare it with 37. It's not same. So you go to the next position. Compare its, its value. If it is not same, you will go on searching to the next and next positions. Now if I put it in the algorithm manner, it goes like this that you assume that the position is the first element position to start with. So your position is the lowest elements position. You took look at the value at that position and compare it with the searched the value to be searched. If it is not equal, if it is equal, well and good, you will stop your search there itself. But like in this case, it is not equal, then you will increment the position value and now start comparing the element which is stored at that position with the desired value. And you will go on doing it in an iterative manner till you find its position. And also note that once you find the value to be equal to the desired value, then you stop the search. You don't continue the search like this. So this is what is the code or this is what is the algorithm for this kind of a search problem. Students, please think and tell me how many times do I have to do the comparison to get the value for 37? I can open the array. You can answer this question. How many times do I have to do the comparison? Right. Like many of you have said, seven times I have to do the comparison because the position of this value in the array is seventh. So answer this question also on the poll. Will the count be dependent on the value to be searched? Yes. Like most of you have said yes. One person has said no, probably because he wrote the for loop for those many number of elements. But please note that you are going to break the for loop or quit the for loop when you find the position. So the count does depend on the value to be searched. You don't do any more comparisons when you identify the position. One more thing you would like to, I would like to know from you is what will be the worst case count if the array length is let us say 80. Please write the answer in the short, short answer in the poll. Yes, like most of you have said, the array length decides the worst case count because that will be the worst kind of comparisons you have to do. 
So, is this the efficient way of searching? Can we not reduce the time in the searching? Let's go back to my own problem of bundle of AT assignment and searching one person's assignment in it. Let's say this is my bundle to start with and I convert it into two halves of 40 each. Now when I divided this bundle into two halves of 40 each, I looked at the alphabet of the last element in this bundle. And it was more than P. So I decided for sure that the Pankaj assignment will be in this group of 40 assignment. And I discarded this bundle because that was starting from Q. Now, where in this is not known to me. So I divided this also into two halves of 20 each. And I checked the last element of the first bundle, but it was smaller than P. So I discarded this bundle and I concluded that Pankaj's assignment is this bundle of 20. And I'll repeat this process. So bundle of 20 will be divided into bundles of 10 and 5 and 2 and 1 till I get the last assignment. So, by reducing the bundle by half every time, what I am trying to do is uh, focus on the assignment which I am searching and I will repeat this process till I get the assignment. So, in the process, I will find Pankaj's assignment by doing less number of comparisons. You can see here that even if I have to go till the last element, I have to do only 6 comparisons as compared to I would have done 80 comparisons. Now this is what is known as binary search algorithm. So let's look at the algorithm in a more systematic way. The lowest position is taken as minimum and the highest position is taken as maximum. And I'll take the average of this, which turns out to be something like this. Now this average, value of this average, I will compare with the expected value. If it is equal, then I'll say, okay, this position is the correct position and I'll stop there. But if not, no. Let me check if the guess is smaller than what I was searching for then I will say that now my new minimum is this and I will search in this interval then but if if the value to be searched was too high then I will say this is my maximum and in that case I will search in this now I'll go back to and then again now my with new min and new max I will have to find new average. And then I will either take this interval or I'll take this interval depending on what is the condition in 4 or 5. And this is how I will go on reducing the intervals till I get the final value. Students, this is known as binary search algorithm. The program for linear search as well as binary search we will see in the next video. Thank you so much.